Right, share screen. You, you... Okay. No, it's, it's coming. Yes, here we are. There's something coming? Yeah, right. that's fine. Thank you. But we okay. can put it into slideshow mode. Oh, yeah, that, that should be there now, shouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Okay, so thank you. So um, thank you for the invite, uh, but I also wanted to say, first of all, a big thank you really to all of our uh, stakeholders um, uh, around health. So that's thank you to the patients um, of Water Beach. Thank you for your um, input in regards to patient participation groups and feedback in regards to what's happened over the last two years with um, our caretaker provider and the upcoming uh, procurement that we're going to be um, out to commission shortly. Also want to say a big thank you to our provider MKGP Plus who's currently holding the contract um, and Bruce Abel joins us, the operational manager from MKGP Plus on the call tonight, today to talk about maybe and answer some specific questions in relation to the practice. Um, and also a big thanks to Urban Civic and all the work that they have been doing with our um, health commissioning team in regards to uh, getting a really good um, health centre built on uh, a permanent health centre built on the new site at Water Beach. So I won't dwell too much on where we are at the moment, um, but I do want to sort of be yeah, based on time, but I do want to sort of talk about what we're doing to make sure that we transition from where we are today with the surgery in the village, uh, where we need to be in terms of the interim arrangements and where we're going to get to uh, with a permanent healthcare facility uh, in the new town. Um, so obviously we've been through uh, two years of a very uh, severe pandemic. Um, a lot of our models of care have changed as a result of that. And again, that sort of testament to the resilience of the patients at Water Beach. We've had to sort of adopt very much a triage first uh, model of care where a lot of that care has been done digitally uh, via telephone. And then when clinically required, then face to face uh, in the practice. Um, we've seen a big digital revolution as well during those two years with patients accessing online and video conferencing. And I think that's really going to be pivotal in, in whatever we design going forward uh, for the new healthcare facility at Water Beach. We've learned a lot from COVID in regards to hot and cold areas and patient flow, uh, but also the importance that you know, some patients do um, prefer having that sort of digital access, whereas others do prefer having that face-to-face -face access and getting that balance right between what patients needs and uh, what we're able to provide as a healthcare provider. Um, I put the CQC there. So the Care Quality Commission, our regulators for health, making sure that we're delivering safe services uh, and effective services. Uh, so as, as many of the patients will know, um, we've gone from an inadequate position to requires improvement. The latest CQC inspection happening uh, at the back end of last year, uh, which still requires improvement, um, but uh, the CQC have, have been really impressed with MKGP Plus getting improvements in all areas and building an action plan, which is going to be deliverable over the next uh, year. We're now in a position as commissioners to um, go beyond our caretaking contract. So we um, have a caretaking contract which ends at the end of this calendar year, December 22. So we're going to be starting a new procurement exercise, a contracting exercise where we go to the market and um, look for a longer term contract uh, to be procured. Uh, I, for, for some of you, con contracts will be um, maybe peculiar to understand in the NHS, but if I just go back a little bit, so Dr. Al Ghazi, who was the GP uh, sort of two years ago, um, had uh, the contract there who retired. Unfortunately, when that happens, um, these uh, contracts are in perpetuity, uh, called GMS contracts, General Medical Services. Um, when that ends, the commissioner has uh, then to go to the market and procure what we call a fixed term contract. And because we didn't necessarily have a strategy in place at that point in time, working with Urban Civic for the longer term, we went out for a short term care caretaking contract. We're now in a position where we're going to uh, procure what we call uh, an APMS, so an alternative provider medical services contract. And we're, we're looking to the market for a seven plus three year contract. So that gives us the longest possible time we can get under these contract regulations where we can get a provider to come in and commit to a 10 year um, contract to deliver healthcare services um, for the patients at Water Beach. 
Um, so that will be happening from a commissioning point of view. As patients um, and the village, you'll see no difference this year to that. So the services will continue to be operated out of the village surgery. Um, uh, and, and that will be the case uh, up until we have an interim uh, arrangement, uh, possibly um, next year. Um, so we're going to invest some money at the moment into Water Beach Surgery to reconfigure the staff room, to make the staff room into more uh, two clinical rooms to give you greater access for uh, patient appointments and for clinicians to work out of. We're also been in uh, um, communications with the local village pharmacy where we have a, a room there that we can also use if required. And we're working very closely with Urban and Civic to um, have uh, interim arrangements where we have um, two consulting rooms, some ancillary rooms and some shared reception areas in the community facility. Um, whilst we see the increase in patients coming into the village uh, and moving and buying in, into the new properties that have already been mentioned. We then um, are going to get into the exciting bit of uh, um, designing um, and talking with Urban and Civic in getting a healthcare facility which is uh, fit for purpose, um, new obviously, um, and can provide an integrated care service uh, to our patients. As I'm sure some of you will know that at the moment the NHS is, is again um, being um, restructured. Um, so later this year, in July the 1st, we become an integrated care system, which means that funds will be uh, merged across the health sector. So from acute services, emergency care, urgent care, community care, mental health care, primary care, will all be amalgamated. So what we'll be probably seeing is um, where you have a very traditional uh, model of care at the GP surgery, where you have GPs, nurses, healthcare assistants, phlebotomists, uh, maybe a clinical pharmacist, a social prescriber. We're going to see a service which is going to have an array of different professionals, different services and different access for patients. So that's the exciting part of where we're in the planning stages. Um, so we hope to, for example, have diagnostic services there, having access to good mental health provision, um, there's a big emphasis on social prescribing and having um, self-care models um, and also bringing in the allied health professionals um, to do things like physiotherapy, um, cancer treatments, um, respiratory services, so more specialist services closer to home rather than patients being expected to travel to the large Addenbrookes or Patworth or um, the, the Peterborough Hospital for, for that type of care. Um, so the other thing, the other big thing that's happening in the NHS at the moment is that once we do move to an ICS, we're going to be further devolved uh, responsibility to delegate um, other primary care uh, services. So we're going to start to commission dentistry, optometry and clinical pharmacy. So with that in mind, we will be hoping to work with Urban and Civic to have a, a site a health centre hub where you're going to be seeing an array of different primary care services um, operating um, out of that site. So an exciting proposition, a lot of work to be doing between now and then. Um, we do want that feedback from the patient participation group um, and the wider patient stakeholders for uh, um, Water Beach. And we're working uh, hand in hand with our current provider and Urban Civic to get to that point. Just, just briefly, just mindful of time, I just did want to just mention that at the moment as commissioners in Cambridge and Peterborough, we are incredibly aware of the pressures in general practice and getting access for appointments for uh, on the day demand. So <clears throat> we do have uh, extended access uh, commissioned. Uh, so that's evening appointments, weekend appointments, which your local practice can um, fit you into and book you into as necessary if they can't see you during core hours. And we've also, um, again, extended our surge hub capacity. So for the rest of this month, um, and we've been running this now for the best part of the year, the surge hub capacity. So again, if you're struggling to get appointments during core hours, then there is there are hubs to have access between one and seven o'clock, Monday to Friday, for those additional appointments. At the moment, uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Are you are you coming to a close? I, I can do yes. We need, and to, we need take to make some questions. Questions. Thank you. Okay. Is, is that all right? And and if you 
finished with your presentation, could you stop sharing your screen? Because then we can we'll do. Uh, handle the rest of it. Okay. Um, so, uh, and in fact, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much indeed for that. That's really helpful. Um, I just wanted to, so in fact, a qu the first question from Jane Williams is actually very similar to one I wanted to ask. Jane has asked, will the village lose its surgery when the health centre in the new town is commissioned? My question was actually, will, will you continue to have a presence, a location in the village when, when the new town um, premises are, made, are built? Mm -hmm. um no, we don't plan to to have that uh, location um, in the village thereafter once the new building is built. Um, part, part of the um, precarious, precariousness of the current surgery is that it's, it's owned by a, a, a previous GP who's retired, who owns and is the landlord of that surgery. Um, so what is a precarious situation is that contract will only last as long as the lease is signed. So the lease is a short-term lease at the moment um, in conjunction with the fact that we have a new facility uh, being built uh, on the new barrack site. So that will come to a natural end anyway. And I understand the landlord who owns that building will want to uh, you know, use that as their, their pension. Um, and that will be probably sold, I would imagine. And the investment and our our uh, revenue costs will go into the new building thereafter. Probably, you know, new new leases, 20, 30 years um, we sign up to do. Um, so that's the NHS paying um, whatever GP contractor will be commissioned to provide services from there for the and, new site. And the reason I'm asking that um, is because, David, I know that people will be very sorry that they won't be able to walk easily to the to a doctor's surgery. I wondered if you had any commitment to continue with some of the services being delivered um, at all in any local premises. You know, maybe uh, um, the, you know at the at the pharmacy, for example, mm. if there were rooms there. Well, we have had discussions uh, with the pharmacy owner in regards to a room that we can utilise if patients would find that helpful. Um, I think we've we've always got a balance between value for money um, and what we're able to commission and what we're not able to commission. So what we can't do is pay for two premises um, for the same patient group necessarily. Um, and we need to put all the investment uh, we can uh, in regards to the capital, but also the, the ongoing revenue costs into the new building. Um, so once the, uh, the site has been built and um, between then and now we have a phasing so we'll have some reconfigurations at the current surgery we'll have the community facility on the new site doing some rooms in conjunction with the surgery still situated at Water Beach Village and once the new premises is built and occupied and we move the contractor in there then my understanding will be that that surgery will then be surplus to, to needs. Um, okay, okay thank you David yeah. um, I, I'm sure people in the village would very much like to see a continuing presence in the village just because they can walk to the doctor's surgery currently, uh, whereas it might well be quite a long way away if it's in the new town. Mm. Anyway, over to you, Sharon. And the next question from Nigel C. Marks, David, is about the quality of the GP service. So it's great that the GP service is improving, but it's still not working at best practice. So when do you believe Water Beach will have a service fit for purpose that can handle all the developments. I'm still waiting for GP feedback three plus months after referral, for example, when and um, you, you've covered that in your um, about phasing, but when will the current site close down roughly EG 2024? Yes, I, I don't know whether Urban and Civic want to, to mention the timeline for the, the permanent building, and it goes back to what was talked about, sort of occupations of, of dwellings being built. Um, I'm happy to yeah. jump in if that would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So as, as David said, we've been working closely um, on how we can help in the kind of short, medium and longer term. Um, the first uh, interim payment was made uh, to help with the, that was from the Papworth 106, which went towards the refurbishment of the existing building that David spoke about. Um, and now we're working on our new community center that will include 
um, rooms for health provision also. And we'd expect that to be open uh, by next year, um, possibly by the end of next year, I'm hopeful. Uh, we're due to get that application in in the next few months. So we'll be going as fast as we can to get that um, community centre open by probably next summerish. I would hope, just depending on build time scales. Um, so I will confirm the exact bill time scales, but aiming for 23. And that will then, as David said, take some pressure off to provide that extra space um, and services, which will be both in the uh, the north of the, the development and then also in the existing village. And then longer term, we've always looked at a location in the barracks. So kind of, you know, halfway between to make sure that access considers people uh, coming from the village, but then and also from the north of the new development. So we're literally trying to, to meet in the middle with the new facility. And we've made sure that this flexibility around how we build that out. And I think that's um, very much embedded in the, in the 106 agreement that we would build as we go. We've always said that the, the first, the permanent center comes forward at 1600 units. So that's the end of the first phase, which we've always said would be around 2027. Um, again, those times, those triggers are linked to, as Mike said earlier, these are obligations linked to triggers of uh, delivery of units. So then there's not an exact time scale. But what we were working closely with David's team is just making sure that aligned with the timing of the lease agreement originally that was going to end into around that time scale as well for the existing building. So I think we're constantly going to be talking with David and the team, looking at how we build that out flexibly to make sure the provision is there at the right time um, to work. Yeah. And, and David, uh, 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 can, can I just make mention to Nigel's uh, other part of the question? Very, so Very, very quickly, please. Yeah, so, so <laughs> Nigel, I, I appreciate this is probably a personal question to you. So if you want to sort of um, ask that question of myself or Bruce offline, then we're happy to answer. But if, if it's referring to a secondary care referral, there, there is a patient helpline, which uh, should be, there should be a telephone number on the website for the practice for you to call to see where you are on the waiting list, if that's, if that makes um, an answer to your question. Uh, but happy to take that offline with you, Nigel. Thank you very much, David. Um, we need to move on now. Um, 